Um, first and foremost, I want to give all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostle elders of Ray Millstone, who rule well. And salutations to all you brothers out there pushing this word in love, truth, sincerity, and humility. Once again, it's the brother Shai there from the Chicago camp. Coming back to you with what I hope was another quick and edifying sit down. And today's video is going to be in response to the whole Amber Geiger trial and the judgment that was given. Now, as most of the nation knows right now, Amber Geiger is this Shedemite devil cop, all right, that uh, unrighteously murdered a Jake, all right, and the trial finally came to an end, what, one, two to something days ago, and the court rendered a verdict of guilty, which is great. But knowing mm -hmm. that we're dealing with the devil and there's always mm -hmm. a, a, a trick. He the judge only gave her 10 years. Now, when the judge uh, said that she's mm -hmm. only going to get 10 years. Our people just it's almost like they got punched in the stomach. It's like the life went out of them. They're like, oh, my God. How can this judge possibly give this woman 10 years? She shot another man in cold blood who, according to society standards, was the model citizen. He had a job. He didn't bother anybody. He had no criminal record. All right. He was all clean shaven. All right. Didn't have a whole bunch of drama. No whole bunch of baby mamas. All right. As I said, this guy was probably the, the perfect model citizen. According to the world standards. And he was gunned down like a savage animal. And our, our people can't figure out, well, well, why, why, why a guilty verdict, but only 10 years? It's because we are still under the uh, uh, oppression uh, of bad Uncle Esau, who is the so-called white man. And as long as we're under his thumb, he's always going to make sure that when it comes to any type of so-called justice, that it will never be true justice. My question to our people is that why are you, why are you surprised? Why are you surprised that you got a backhanded judgment? You all want to get up on the street and podiums and, and, and talk about how we need to rise up from this oppression. Even your, your, your mouth condemns you when you get up on these stages and you talk about slavery, Jim Crow, sharecropping, lynching, what they call that, uh, 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 redlining, not being able to get business loans. Your own mouth condemns you that this devil has a long standing uh, uh, track record in history of making sure you stay uh, uh, oppressed and disenfranchised. But yet, when you get a bogus verdict, you're surprised. But see, the only answer that I could come up with, according to the scripture, is that you lack wisdom. You lack the wisdom and the understanding of the scripture. Because if you the spirit was truly dealing with you all, you would understand that the scripture lets you know that bad uncle Esau, who is the, what society calls the modern day uh, uh, white man or Caucasian. All right. The scripture will let you know that he is your number one sworn adversary. And that the progenitor of the Edomite race made a promise to destroy you all. And if you knew this, your mind would be in a totally different position. As it says in the scripture, let me get this. Uh, Ecclesiastic is seven. I think it's seven and seven. 
All right. Uh, I think it's seven. Let me get a uh, oh, Ecclesiastes. Sorry about that. Ecclesiastes seven and seven. I knew it was one of them. Okay. Because if you truly knew the scripture, this is how you would feel. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. See, that's how I know that you all are not dealing with wisdom, and the Spirit is not dealing with you. Because if you knew the information of the Bible, you would be completely outraged. There wouldn't be no surprise that this devil only got 10 years. You wouldn't be surprised that that let's say by chance they even gave her a, a, a not guilty verdict. All right. None of this would surprise you. If the spirit was truly dealing with you and you all had wisdom and understanding, but you don't. Why? Because for some odd reason, you still trust in this devil. You still trust in this system. All right. Our people have the, the worst case of Stockholm syndrome that I have ever seen in my entire life. That's why it says. Uh, uh, I know it's in Isaiah, but it talks about go down to Egypt for help. All right. Yep. This is Isaiah 31 and one. And it says, woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. All right. And we all know that modern day Egypt is America. All right. You just have to go to the book of Revelation and it will tell you that. And, and what type of help are, is our our people looking for? justice but you're not going to get that you will never get true justice while esau is ruling you have to remember as it says in job 9 and 24 the earth is given into the hand of the wicked so how can you expect judgment from the wicked what does the scripture also say the wicked are estranged from the womb. Uh, they uh, they be born speaking lies. What's the other one? The soul that is uh, lifted up in him is not a right. What's the other one in Psalms? What have ye to do to declare my statutes? All right, all these things are are talking about the 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 mindset of bad Uncle Esau. And how he is completely contrary to the scripture, how he's wicked. And because of that, he will never, ever render to you Israelites a righteous judgment. And it says, and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Most High. See, whenever we get into a conflict, whenever something bad happens to us, who do we go to? We go to our enemy. All right, we go to Esau, we go to Ishmael, we go to Elam. All right, we go to their uh, the their uh, their bodyguards, the modern day police. We go to everybody but Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, who has laws, statutes, and commandments. And guidelines for us to go by to to govern our daily lives so we can walk righteously and render perfect and righteous judgment. But no, we got to go to Esau. So when you go to the wicked, what type of judgment should you expect? And see, this is why you all get so frustrated 
Because you don't know who your enemy is. And why he continues to disenfranchise you. And why you 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 long to to be in their place. We're gonna go to Psalm 73. And I'm going to get straight to the point. Psalm 73 and 3, it says, For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. That is bad, Uncle Esau. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. Verse 5, They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. All right, because what you jakes... What, what what makes it so sad is that you Jakes know that if the shoe was on the opposite foot, if it was a Jake cop that went inside of a Edomite female's uh, uh, place of residence or habitation and shot her down in cold blood, that he would probably get the death penalty, if not damn near two, three, four lifetimes behind bars. And see, this is what gets you all frustrated because deep inside, you know this. But yet and still, you still trust this damn devil. And it's sad because it seems like it's really going to take for you all to learn the hard way that you cannot trust this damn devil. As the scripture says, and I'm going to end it out on this one. Uh... A very popular one that we use. Ecclesiastic is 12 and 10, and we're going to end it out on this one. It says, never trust thine enemy. Who is our enemy? All the other nations. But our, as I said before, our number one adversary is bad Uncle Esau. Still called white man. All right. And it says, for iron, for like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. All right. Meaning that it never goes away. It says, though he humble himself, though he sits up on the bench in his robe, looking all so-called professional and, 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 and mighty and uh, a man that's beyond reproach because he renders judgment. It says, take good heed and beware of him. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass. And thou shalt know that his rust have not been altogether wiped away. Meaning that no matter how much uh, 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 law school that he has, no matter uh, what position he holds or how according to his own laws he's supposed to render judgment, or whatever interaction you're going to have with these devils where a decision will have to be made in regards to a conflict or situation regarding you and bad uncle Esau. Hey man, the, the nine times out of 10 is not going to go your way. And that one time in this situation where we have here is still going to be backhanded. All right, you Jakes need to wake up and repent and realize that you cannot have a fair shake in this kingdom. It just wasn't meant for us to have it that way. All right, return back to your true power, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. This is the solution. Okay, get right before you learn the hard way. I would prefer that you all not learn the hard way, but if you continue on this dangerous and destructive path, all right, the Lord will have to render judgment as such. So with that being said, I want to give all glory, honor, and praises to 
Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, double honors to the apostle elders, a great millstone who rule well, and salutations to all you brothers out there pushing this word and love, truth, sincerity, and humility. With that, we're going to say Shalom.